Welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. And I'm Karen. We are a mother-daughter duo of mediums, medical intuitives, psychics, and energy healers offering personal sessions to clients all over the world. And this is our podcast. Coffee with the Sarlows is a platform to share the remarkable experiences of our clients and the messages that are channeled for them from the spirit world. These stories will make you laugh, some will make you cry, and some are certain to be an absolute butt-kicking with love. Our intent for this podcast is to gently and kindly challenge your beliefs, grow your empathy, and help you find pieces of your own self in each one of these individual stories. Before we jump into today's show, we have a few notes for our listeners. Karen and I have personal practices channeling for local and international clients. If the stories in these shows is something you'd like to experience, you can request your own personal session through our website, bysarlo.com. We also have gift certificates available if you wish to gift this experience to someone anywhere in the world. We have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. This series is your emotional and intuitive intelligence toolkit. We pick one topic every month and provide you with healthy tools for critical thinking and communication. This series airs the first week of every month. The first show is free and can be found on our website, your favorite podcast platform, or YouTube. The full series can be found on patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Patreon is our membership portal with a ton of monthly benefits for those of you seeking to grow your emotional and intuitive intelligence. Karen has a personal blog that explores the beauty and importance of intuitive gifts. There's a question and answer segment that addresses listeners' questions. As we mentioned, you can find the complete Sips of Sanity series here along with handy habit trackers and great reflective questions to help you get the most from the shows. We provide you with guided journeys and music to enrich that experience, and we're running an emotionally intelligent, interactive book club. And for patrons in our top tier, each month we're putting your names into a draw for a free half-hour channeling session with Karen or myself. If you're interested in joining us, head over to patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo. Now, on to the show. Kelly, I'm pumped. Oh, good. This is such a lighthearted, fun show. Oh, thank goodness. Let's do it. Yeah. Now, I know, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with that. I know some people might go, none of the shows are lighthearted. You're talking about dead people and how the families are missing them. So I get it that, <laughs> that on a scale of 1 to 10, my idea of a lighthearted show might be very skewed. I thought you were going to say fucked. Both accurate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I need a female name because the lady that calls is a female. Okay. So I'm going to go with Eliana. Eliana? I told you I'm having so much fun with these new names. Oh my God. Mm. Okay. So that's absolutely beautiful. Okay. So Eliana, and, and I want to explain a little bit of the history here. Eliana is a client that I've seen for six years. Wow. Now, when I met her, I would say that she was probably around 22. And at that time, she reached out to me because her mom had just passed. Oh, my goodness. So this is how how we meet each other is because of the services. And over the last six years, she calls fairly frequently to check in on mom. Love it. So she will make her phone call and she'll show up and I'll say, hi, have I seen you before? And she'll laugh and giggle. (laughs) Mm. And she'll go, yep, 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 you have. Not my first. (laughs) Not the first time, Karen. But I get it. You ask me constantly. And then she'll always start the session by saying, "Um, I just want to know, I just want to check in with mom. How's mom? You have an hour. So she always books an hour and it's to check in with her. Now, the reason that I'm saying all of this and that, you know, the verb tenses are going to change between I'm in a session with her and this happened and she told me is because finally, after six years, she said to me, I found out you have a podcast show. Oh, <laughs> I said, welcome. Yeah, I said, yes, I do with my daughter. She goes, I know, I listen to it. She says, I just was Googling you one day because I'd lost your information to contact you. And if I don't see that you have a podcast show, and I thought, oh my God, I have to give her permission to tell the story of my mom and I. Hmm. So what I found out from her is that right from the very first session, she recorded everything. 
she moved from straight phone calls to FaceTime to Zoom. So we could not see each other, then of course see each other through FaceTime and Zoom. She also wrote notes and Kelly Sarla, she charted. Oh, I like her. Yeah. So she said, Karen, she said, I really think this would be beneficial for the people listening who are skeptics, who really just think I need proof, I need proof. And she goes, so I'm one of your clients that literally has six years of study. Mm. And she says, and I, and I can point things out to you. I can, and so they're hearing the story today. And that's exactly how I'm going to explain some of them too. So she says, the first one I want to give an example is, is that look here on the chart. So she flips it up and she shows me her charting system, which is really cool to see that somebody's done that. And she says, back in this year, so she's got the year, then she's got whether she has seen me session one, session two. And she goes, so back here in this year, six years ago, you told me in the first year after my mom passed away, you made a comment about a pregnancy in seven months and that my mom knew that there would be a grandbaby. And I, look what I did. And she put an X. And I said, oh, I got that wrong. And she goes, no, you got that right. And she said, but what I realized afterwards is that I assumed everything was about me. Oh, neat. And she goes, so I booked the appointment. I thought my mom was talking to me about me. And so I made the assumption she meant that I was pregnant. And of course, I wasn't even with anybody. So that I knew there was no way it was, I was going to have a baby in seven months. I wasn't even having sex. And she said, so I put an X. And then she said, the next time I went to see you, was nine months later. And she says, here's the date. So she shows me the date. And she goes, and here you, we, I, you, my mom confirms that there's a grandbaby, but it's my brother and my sister-in-law. So it was correct at that time about the baby, but she put an X on it because she misunderstood. Mm. And of course, you and I both know that unless her mom had specified whose baby, she had just said she was going to be a grandma, then we would have specified that. But if she doesn't, we don't. We just leave it be. And if the client doesn't ask for a validation, we don't ask for that. Yeah, we move on. We move to the next thing because we don't know how she's processing that. We can't. So she's showing me how there are these little X's <laughs> And then she's showing me how she's highlighted those little X's. And I said, does the highlighting mean that they were right or they were wrong? And she goes, well, the highlighters mean that it turns something from wrong into correct. So eventually, Karen, what I did was I took all of the recordings when I realized I was making mistakes. I went back to the very beginning and I listened to every single show and I, and I listened to them with the intention to look at my charting system to see what was correct, what wasn't correct, and what wasn't really fully disclosed. Mm -hmm. So there might be something that didn't ever come to fruition. And she goes, now what I'm understanding is some of them may never have an opportunity to, so I've highlighted that. But the other ones I've highlighted in a different color, meaning that they still could, because when I first called you, I didn't understand that some things would be in the future. And I said, well, hold on. Why not? You called a psychic. And, and she goes, yeah, but if I remember correctly, when I called you, I called a medium. She says, I didn't realize when I was given your name by a friend and your phone number that you were a medium. I kept thinking of everything in terms of medium without thinking that you had psychic ability, but it made no sense that I thought that because you were consistently telling me things about the future. So she goes, I don't even know why I thought this way. But she says, I would be willing to bet that other people think these mistakes too. Mm -hmm. And that they assume that you're wrong about everything in the future if they can't believe that it could be true. She says, because I dismissed all of those things. I went through and I made every single one of them wrong on you. And she says, so what I'm also trying to say today is that six years ago, I would have said, you know, someone said, is she any good? 
I might have said she's really nice, but she's about 50% accurate. And she says, and now I look at the accuracy and I want to smack my own old self. (laughs) (laughs) She says, because your accuracy was unbelievable. And I would have badmouthed you and not really known that I was doing that by saying that your accuracy was only half and half. And she says, so I also thought that was really important to tell you that people listening need to hear that we are the ones that make the mistakes and that sometimes what we're doing is we're projecting them onto you and Kelly. Well, yeah, I, you know what? I think that's a portion of it. But the other the other thing is, is that a lot of people sit there and think, I don't have to do any work. She's going to do all the work for me. Yeah. And they don't anticipate, like she has now done, needing to go back, reflect on things, wait for things to come to fruition to actually understand the accuracy. That's part of the work itself. People sit, ask questions, sometimes not even really good questions by any means, Mm -hmm. meaning that they can't really get the answer they're looking for, and then just think, oh, well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she, she had these light bulb moments of understanding what we do and thought, I got to share these stories and I got to give some of these examples. So she just grabbed a couple of examples for me and I'm just going to share them with everybody today. So for our second story, Eliana says, now at the second visit in the first year, mom talked a lot about dad and she talked about the fact that he thought he was ready to meet a new woman. He wanted to go right from losing mom right into another relationship He didn't want to be alone. He didn't want to be lonely. He just, he wanted somebody there to be there through dinners and companionship, but he also just wanted it to be a marriage right off the bat. And he didn't want to have to date or do anything of the sort. And you had told me at the time that mom said, you have to talk to him, Eliana, because he's going to end up with a woman who who could very much be either abusive or a drama queen or just have her own issues and he can't see it because all he's thinking about is I need somebody. And so she says to me, you really spent a lot of that session and I was supposed to write things down and make sure that I gave all the messages to dad from mom. Like, what the hell are you thinking? And she says, and I wrote messages to dad. And I remember giving dad this like note slash letter from mom. And it had everything to do with, yes, you're going to have a partner, you have to slow down. And so she was writing about mature woman versus an immature woman. And so she was saying to her husband, this is so beautiful, eh? Mm -hmm. She's saying to her husband, an immature woman can be 50 years old, honey, but immature means that she isn't independent or interdependent. It means that she has low emotional intelligence. It means that she likes drama, that she could gaslight the poop out of you, that she could um, spin stories, that she could want you for X number of reasons and so on, but be really nice to you at the beginning. And then she'll let you see who she really is once she's got you married. And she goes, so this is what a mature woman is like. A mature woman will take her time dating you. She won't want, to, won't want to marry you within the first year. She won't even discuss it. She'll want to go through seasons with you to see if the relationship actually has a good foundation. And she's going to tell you the truth even if you don't like it. But she'll tell you in a way to collaborate. She'll tell you in such a way as to, can we problem solve this together? Are you a problem solver? I'm one. Do you rush through things? Do you take your time and talk? Do you share what you feel? Am I supposed to guess what you feel? And so they had written all these little things down and had given it to him and said there would be four years where he chooses to be single if he really takes her information to heart and values the relationship that they used to have and that he would come to that decision on his own about four years. She's not telling him what to do. She's not trying to control him. She's saying that he needs to understand what a healthy relationship is. They had one, but he's in such a panic right now that he's he's just willing to throw everything out just to be with somebody. So she's reminding him of their relationship and why it was so healthy. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm-hmm. And so I said, how'd that work? And she goes, well, my dad has surpassed four years. (laughs) 
He has dated a couple, not many, but currently he's come up to me and said, I do believe I have found what your mother would refer to as a mature woman. (laughs) (laughs) And not one of the drama queens. Mm -hmm. Isn't that lovely, Gal? Like I just, oh, I just love how she's showing how she's there for each of them throughout the like the whole six years, right from right after when she passes away. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, I'm not going to miss anything. I'm not going to interfere, but I'm certainly going to still put my two cents and you guys do what you want with those two cents. Then Eliana says to me, okay, we're going to move to the next story. And she says, the next one had to do with the fact that after mom died, she says, I didn't know what to do with my life. She said, I had ideas before that, but I just felt so depressed. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to do anything. And it was super hard just to get up to get to work. And sometimes coworkers and my boss had to call and say, are you coming in today? And she says, I thought I was going to get fired. She says, because sometimes I would walk in around 11 o'clock in the morning and my face would be so red from crying that everybody would just know, oh, she wasn't like just sleeping in. She was at home and couldn't get herself together to get here. So no, she never got fired. Wow. No, she had a really good work environment. I'll say that was a healthy work environment. Excuse me. I'd like to use the word healthy and not good. And um, they supported her in her grief. And then she had a session where her mom said to her, um, it's time to go to school. And it's time to actually just try something that you think would just spark an interest, just pick something. So we had worked on it in that session. And that's what one of those sessions were, was just what could spark an interest for her. That's it. We went into some past lives which she had done in other lifetimes. Her mom was there to help us get through the past lives together and talk to her about it. So she went back to school Mm. and currently um, she's going to be graduating. So her mom comes through in that session and says, we have a graduation coming up. And this is accurate that at that point, at that particular session, grad was coming up, I think within a month or two. And what mom was trying to do was to say, over the last three years, I've been going to school with you. Mm -hmm. She's trying to say, as you've been struggling in school, um, or where you thought you weren't going to make it sometimes, you questioned your memory because you were grieving. She went ahead and approached the profs and said, I've lost my mom. My memory isn't altogether here. I might need a little bit longer to get through. I might need a cue for something. And they said to her, you got it. Jesus, good for her. So they allowed her to have a cue. They didn't let her have full answers. But if one word or a phrase would stimulate the memory, then they allowed her to write that down. They looked at it for the exam, said, yep, you're good to go. This is just keywords. It's not full explanations. You're good. And she's graduating. So mom is all the way through these sessions showing up in between when, you know, she'd come for each session. Okay, we're at the one year mark. We did it. Then she'd get to the end of the two year. Okay, we put two years in. Mm -hmm. And then she, so she would come along all the way to say you're in school, you didn't quit. She would make all these little comments. I know you're having a hard time right now because of me. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I'll try and help you with your memory. She would make these little comments to let her know that she knew what she was struggling with or that she was doing okay and that they were just still together. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of together, no doubt. We can't take that part away, but it's still a togetherness and she's proving it to her. Then Eliana says, okay, for the next story, we have to go backwards again. So we constantly have to go back and forward to figure all of this out. And she says, so about four years ago, and one of your sessions, my mom came in right out of the blue and told me that my sister was a drug addict. And I'm like, what? And she goes, and I had no clue. I was in school, working part-time at that same company. My sister was in a completely different city. And that they were staying connected just by a random phone call sporadically, but that she wasn't paying 
she meaning Eliana, wasn't paying much attention to it because she was so bogged down with schoolwork and work. And that during that period of time, so she did end up finding out that her her sister has a drug issue. Her mom says, I'm telling you this, your father knows. He's not telling you because he needs for you to get through school. Mm. He's handling it on his own with your two brothers. But they don't want you to be more overwhelmed when you finally got everything together and you're trying to get through school. So they're doing what they can to handle it. I'm coming through to tell you that everything is okay. But what I want to tell you is, is that she's going to go to jail. And I don't want you to panic when she does. She will not go to prison. She's going to jail for a minor theft. It's going to be her first experience and it's going to be done to scare the shit out of her. And it's going to work. Jeez. She's going to come out. And I'm telling you that within the next four to five years, she's going to be a social worker. And I'm like, huh? And she and I said, so what happened? Uh, like, did she? And she goes, yes. She goes, my sister is a social worker. And she's trying to make sure that she gets specialties in drug and alcohol addiction. Mm-hmm. So Eliana confirms and shows me all of this in the charting system. Nice. I'm so glad. Uh, you know, if I look back at all of that kind of stuff, Kelly, where a client is presenting everything and saying, you got it right, you got it right. This is one I want right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't want that to be wrong that her sister has ended up dead of a drug overdose. I don't want it. Oh, There's just a number of things you just don't want in that story. So I am so grateful that the spirit world loves accuracy as much as you and I do. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, (laughs) my heart just burst that all of that was good for for Eliana. Yeah, and her sister. (laughs) Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. The next little one is short and sweet. It is so lovely. So then she says, Karen, take a look at this one. She says, this one had to do with my very last session. And um, I just want to tell you before we get into it, that it all works well. And that I'm so happy about this one. So her mom goes back to the very beginning and the very, like, so now it's been six years that she's been doing this particular message in all of the sessions but she talks about the men that Eliana is dating. And so you can see the ticks through each of those um, sessions. Her mom talks about the types of men that she's dating, and she gives her a little synopsis about each one of them, what she likes about them, and what Eliana is supposed to notice. Not telling her what to do, just what to notice, and I'm going to say something very specifically, in regards to their emotional intelligence where they might do something that is low EQ versus high EQ. And then Eliana says to me, my mom was explaining these things, Karen, and I had to ask you what EQ was. And then we did like a big chunk of one of the sessions around emotional intelligence. And as a result of my mom instigating it, I have spent the last six years learning. Cool. She's a hard worker. She is. Absolutely is. And it's paying. So currently, her mom has said that the person that she's dating now is somebody of good quality emotional intelligence and gets her approval. So then Eliana says to me, okay, I've got a couple of other little points I want to say to you, Karen. You were able to affirm for me when our family dog died. You told me that mom was there to greet our dog when she passed. Then when a second dog passed about two years later, you affirmed again when the second dog died, mom popped in to say, I've got him. She says, you have no idea what that did for dad and I. Each time we had lost one of the pets. Mm -hmm. Then when we got a puppy, I was anxious to see, well, will mom know when we get a puppy? Sure enough, mom would come into a session and say, you got a dog. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And the last, oh no, second last message, Kelly, was... They decided to sell some of the furniture in the house. They decided piece by piece to get rid of things as the family unit changed. So over the six years, dad's got the house, mom has passed. There's four kids, two girls, two boys. There are times when all five of them are living together again, all as adults. There are times when some of them leave, dad stays in the house consistently. 
but the children come and go as different things are going on in their life and they need a place to stay. Sometimes they're there for two or three years. Somebody might come and stay for maybe a month. Things keep changing and mom knows who's in the house and it becomes almost like a game to see, does mom know who's in the house? And she said at one point, everybody wanted one of the boys, one of the sons to get out because of his behavior. But they didn't want to kick him out because they didn't want to offend mom. They didn't want mom to get upset. And mom showed up to say, kick him the hell out. He has to learn respect. He had, like, this is a life lesson. And so she was, mom still there to support them. Then when they changed more furniture, now as it stands as of today, 2021, COVID days, the dad still owns the house has a girlfriend, but not living in his house. Daughter, that my client, is still living with dad. She has a boyfriend. So they're just figuring out right now if they're going to sell the house and both go and create new homes, if one of them is going to keep the house, if he's going to sell it to her. And she was like, yeah, I want to I wanna ask mom what she thinks about that. And mom goes, no. <sighs> She goes, I'm not weighing in to tell you what to do. That's not my job. My job is just to let you know I know what shit's going down. But you're all humans and these are your decisions. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, like, honestly, Kelly, I was tickled pink to see where I've made mistakes to learn where I could, and, and where Eliana could sit down and tell me how I made a mistake. Or sometimes she couldn't, you know, I have to go back to the spirit world and ask for some help for that. Um, sometimes where she would say where she made the mistake or the, the interpretation or the timing, just the whole thing was a wonderful learning experience. And for me, also a great experience of seeing a client with gratitude and my own and just being there with her mom, for all three of us to share that together, to see how hard her mom has worked over all these years, um, to let them know that they're all loved. Mm -hmm. They're all living their own lives, but that they're still loved. Because I think it's something we're so scared of when someone dies, is that we're not loved anymore. Because they're gone, we think it's gone. The love is gone. And it's not. She sure as shit proves it. Good show. Is it? I said I, I was all excited at the beginning. So does it stand up to the test of it's a heartwarming story? I think mom did an excellent job of loving her entire family. Oh, Kel, I forgot something. Her mom said at the very end of the very last session that her and her father had decided to renovate the laundry room. Finally. <laughs> And should, they don't know whether it's going to be because they choose to sell the house or if it's for one of them and their partner or whatever. But finally, it was getting done. Nice. Mm -hmm. She's just so happy. Thanks for listening to Coffee with the Sarlows. If you enjoyed the show today, help spread the love with a like, share, or review of the podcast. See you next Saturday with a brand new episode.